Today, I'd like to talk to you about why we should learn to love surveillance. So for the last year, the world has been in a complete panic over privacy. We've heard about the National Security Agency, the world's largest spying organization. We've heard about Edward Snowden. We've heard about GCHQ, Britain's own secret surveillance center. And some of our daily newspapers, which shall remain nameless, have been trying to persuade us that GCHQ is run by Voldemort. Um, it's probably not run by Voldemort. But actually, these large organizations are relatively unimportant. They're the spies of yesterday. And what I want to talk to you about today are the spies of tomorrow. And the spies of tomorrow are you and me. The spies of tomorrow are everybody who has one of these in their pocket. Everybody who has one of these is a mobile Bletchley Park, a mini Bletchley Park collecting information, storing information, sharing information, lots of data. And that data, a wave of big data, is carrying us towards the middle of the 21st century. And I want to explain to you what it will be like living in the middle of the 21st century. And it's, it's actually going to be rather strange. It's going to be like living in a medieval village. It's going to be like being a hobbit in the Shire. Everybody is going to know who you are. Everybody is going to know who your friends are. Everybody is going to know what you're saying to your friends. Everybody is going to know what you're thinking. Everybody is going to know what you're going to buy for Christmas next, 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 next year. It's going to be a slightly strange place but it's going to be a very exciting place. In fact, I think it's going to be rather wonderful. Who are the new spies? Who are the spies of today? During the Cold War, we knew who the spies were. The spies were the KGB with their moles, the CIA spying on Chinese submarines, Russian missiles. It was a bit like a massive train spotters convention a little bit boring. Now, espionage is much more exciting because espionage is about people. Espionage is about globalized people and the organizations that have information about people are not the traditional spying agencies. They're the banks, the airlines, the ISP providers, and the supermarkets. The secret service that has the most information on me, that has the biggest file on me, is my supermarket. I, I won't tell you which supermarket I shop with, but I think you can probably guess. <laughs> and what can my supermarket do with that information? Ten years ago, all my supermarket could do is use that information to restock its shelves. Five years ago, it could use that information to predict what I'm going to buy next week or next month. Now, it can do amazing stuff with that information. It can tell if I'm well. It can tell if I'm ill. It can tell if I'm happy. It can tell if I'm sad. And actually, it can predict how I will vote in the elections in May. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a confused person. I'm a, classic, I'm a classic floating voter. I don't know who I'm going to vote for till I get into the poll booth. But my supermarket knows. It can run a little algorithm over everything I've bought in the last five years. And it, it knows much better than I do who I'm going to vote for in May. And that tells us something. I believe that I have the secret vote. But actually, I don't. Because by running that algorithm, you can predict with 80% accuracy, next year it will be 90% accuracy. Big data is lifting the lid off government, society, corporations, individuals. We are seeing the end of privacy and the end of secrecy. But those are the spies of today. Who are the spies of tomorrow? The spies of tomorrow are you and me. 
And I want to talk to you for a moment about an event which you may remember in 2013. You may remember there was the bombing of the Boston Marathon. A very sad event. A bomb which killed, at the, at the finishing line of the Boston Marathon, it killed several people, it injured about 100, and, and it was a terrible thing. How did the population of Boston respond? About six hours after this bombing, people, just random people, were up on the internet, and they were saying, had anybody taken a photograph of the finishing line a few minutes before the, before the bombing? And some people had. Had anybody taken a photograph of anybody with a rucksack? Anybody looking a bit shifty? And there were quite a few photographs of shifty people with rucksacks. And six hours after that, people were saying, well, I know who that person is. My friend knows who that person is. And six hours after that, they were putting addresses to names. And six hours after that, there was a mob outside one of these people's houses. Life in the medieval village. Surveillance is scary when it's in the hands of the National Security Agency. It's scarier when it's in the hands of your supermarket. But it's really scary when it's in the hands of you and me. And of course, they got the wrong guy. But in five years' time, they will get the right guy. And I will try and explain why. Because in five years' time, we are going to be living in the Internet of Things. Everything you buy in a shop that costs more than 20 pounds will have an IP address. Your shoes will tell you how many, how many miles you walk today, in my case, how many yards. Your fridge will tell you whether you're running out of cheese. And your handbag, you will no longer watch your handbag because your handbag will be watching you. <laughs> and we will be genuinely in the world of big data. Everything will be recorded all the time. And, and, sorry, and surveillance, privacy, secrecy will be much greater than it is now. In fact, privacy is already in the intensive care ward. In five years' time, it will be dead. But although privacy will be gone, corporations will no longer have confidentiality. Corporations will no longer be able to do funny things with their taxes. I could name a few. You probably know who they are. Governments will no longer be able to do secret stuff. Governments will not be able to build secret prisons in Europe and torture people. So it will be, how will it be? It will be a bit like living, a bit like living in a nudist camp. And I'm not quite sure how I feel about living in a nudist, but it will be very interesting. <laughs> and this is really about whistleblowers using big data to call businesses and governments to account. Back in the 20th century, the biggest leaker was someone called Daniel Ellsberg. Daniel Ellsberg leaked the Pentagon Papers about the Vietnam War, a vast volume of papers stolen from the Pentagon. To do that, Daniel Ellsberg needed 24-hour access to photocopiers and some really big shopping bags. Now, you can steal all the secrets of the Western world on a hard drive about twice the size of my fist. And Whitehall and Washington are terrified. I've been to a presentation by a senior official in the United States. She was addressing a room full of generals, generals in charge of special forces, and she said, don't do any bad stuff. Don't do any bad stuff, firstly because bad stuff is bad. <laughs> but secondly, you will get found out because there is no secrecy. We are moving towards a transparent society. Where will we be in 10 years' time? Where will we be in 2025? We will no longer be in the Internet of Things. We will be in the Internet of People. Because in 2025, everybody will have a chip in their arm, everybody will be carrying a SIM card inside their body. And that sounds rather implausible, but actually, in Europe, we now have a million cattle that contain a SIM card that are continually transmitting their medical information. 
and I am desperate to join the herd. Why is that? All those cattle produce milk, and a lot of it is being turned into cheese, and I love cheese. <laughs> I'm eating about half of that cheese, and I'm, I'm a bit worried about what's going on in here. And when I have one of these chips in my arm, it will track my health, and if I'm going to have a stroke next week, or a heart attack, it will pick up the pre-signs, and I will be called into my doctor, and I'll be given some medicine, and I won't have a heart attack. So the point I'm trying to make here is that sharing big data is not just about shopping. It's not just about sharing your holiday photographs with your friends. Quite big things are at stake here. It's actually, for me, it's a choice between extended life and death. And given that choice, I'm going to go for extended life because I'm really worried about the cheese. But the tariff is quite high. If you think about it, there's nothing more private than what's going on in my body. My medical records are quite sensitive. But I'm going to be happy for that stuff to be pumped up to the cloud and, and stored by the UK government that doesn't have a particularly good record of protecting private information because the rewards are going to be great. And it's not just about me, it's also about you. Because if we all share our medical information generously, democratically, all sorts of diseases which have plagued human beings for generations will be cured. Medical science will rush forward. If we lock our data down, if we're obsessed with privacy, those things won't happen. Are there a few secrets that should remain secret? There, for the time being, there probably are. Edward Snowden was a contractor who worked for the National Security Agency, the world's largest spying organization. But the National Security Agency doesn't just do spying. There's a bit of the National Security Agency which does something called cyber war that makes computer viruses. And in 2009, allegedly, the National Security Agency helped to make something called Stuxnet. Stuxnet was a computer virus that attacked the Iranian nuclear program. And it was an ingenious virus. It jumped across an air gap. It's now being analyzed by computer scientists all over the world because it escaped. And those scientists are writing papers about it in open journals. And we have cyber war proliferation. What happens, what would happen if the next Edward Snowden, and there will be another Edward Snowden, didn't work in the bit of the National Security Agency that does spying, but instead worked in the bit of the National Security Agency that made computer viruses. And what if, when that next Edward Snowden becomes disgruntled with his or her employer, they run off, and instead of having a bunch of PowerPoint slides from GCHQ in their bag, they have the latest computer viruses. What could that person do? Late last year, somebody in a government building that I shan't identify, flicked the wrong switch, and they turned off the internet in Syria. Oops. They realized what they'd done, and they flicked the switch on again. And, and I'm sure you won't tell anyone about it. It's, it's very secret. Um, incredible things can be done now. And actually, if the next Edward Snowden runs off with those computer viruses, they could probably turn off all the power stations in Europe on the coldest day of the year. Is this possible? European computer security companies are very worried about this stuff. They're so worried about it, they actually have a name for this problem. They call it the Frankenstein problem, because this is a monster that we created ourselves. But actually, these secrets are temporary issues because of the wave of big data, the wave of the future is surging towards us. And it will remove privacy, it rem will remove confidentiality, it will remove secrecy. 
and in the medium term, governments will not be able to do these things. What matters for us is that we, that we embrace big data, that we understand it, and that we own it democratically. If our data is owned by a few governments, by a few corporations, if it's a steep hierarchy, life could be quite unpleasant. But if it's owned democratically, if it's shared generously, if we think about it intelligently, the future actually could be quite nice. Either way, the future is coming towards us faster than you think. And I think it could actually be quite exciting. I think it could be quite wonderful. In fact, I think the future is going to be fabulous.